Stan Jabalisco here to tell you very briefly how to calculate the characteristic impedance of a coaxial line or an open wire line with air or a vacuum as the dielectric. These are idealized scenarios. We have a coaxial line shown here on the left, cross-sectional view looking straight down the line, and here is a parallel wire line, again a cross-sectional view. Suppose that the inside conductor of a coaxial line has a radius of r in a certain units, like millimeters, for example. And suppose that the inside radius of the outer conductor in the same units is s. Then the characteristic impedance in ohms is 138 times the base 10 logarithm of the ratio s to r. Similarly over here with a parallel wire line, Suppose that the radius of the conductors is R and the center to center spacing between them is S. Then the characteristic impedance in ohms is 276 times the base 10 logarithm of the ratio S over R. Note, interestingly, that 276 is exactly twice 138. Kind of interesting there. So I'd like to show you a very particular scenario, a practical situation, quite practical, of open wire line. Now this assumes no spacers at all. So the spacers are going to lower the characteristic impedance just a bit. But suppose that we have two wires, each with a radius of one millimeter. That means a diameter of two millimeters. So they're pretty skinny wires, maybe AWG number 14 or 16, something like that spaced 100 millimeters apart. That's just about four inches. That's an entirely practical uh, open wire line that you might make yourself. What is the characteristic impedance of that open wire if you don't have any spacers between, uh, between the conductors? If you space them in some other way, like by their own tension or something, what would the characteristic impedance be? Well, we can take our little calculator and find out. First of all, the log of s over r, that's 100 divided by 1. Let's take the logarithm of 100. That's the ratio. You probably guess what that is. That's 2. Okay. Now, just to be sure we don't ha get any weird artifacts, I will exit that program and start over. Now we simply multiply 2 76 times 2. 552 ohms would be the characteristic impedance of this particular line. Now you put spacers in between there, uh, say spaced at uh, 30 centimeter intervals or about a foot apart, you'd probably lower that to around 500 ohms. That is a typical impedance there. Let, let's think of something here. Let's say we have over here a radius R of, once again, one millimeter. And let's suppose that this uh, inside radius here is, oh, let's say we've got a pretty hefty, uh, we get some uh, copper conduit or something like that. Uh, let's just suppose that we get uh, a radius here of, oh, what do you, what do you think sounds good? How about 10 millimeters? Oh no, how about, let's, let's go with 12 millimeters. Okay, now we need to take the ratio of 12 to 1. S over R is 12 to 1, so we need to find the logarithm of 12. Well, there it is. It's kind of a goofy number, kind of, a, it's, it's an irrational number, uh, it means it goes on forever, but this just rounds it off to a very approximate, what, 10 digits or something. Now we can multiply this times 138. 148, just about 150 ohm characteristic impedance there. That's an interesting, uh, kind of an interesting characteristic impedance. I actually built a line like that once, a very short run of air dielectric line. And uh, interestingly enough, 
I could run a very high standing wave ratio on that and force feed an antenna with almost no loss. Very interesting concept that I may, I think I have described in uh, one or two of my other videos relating to amateur radio practice. But this uh, little example here, I will uh, put this in my Ham Radio 3 playlist because these are lines commonly used by amateur radio operators. And by the way, if you're curious, my call sign is W1GV. I am found oftentimes on CW and PSK, particularly on the 20 and 15 meter bands, also on 17, 12, and 10 meters. Stan Jibalisco, signing off for now. Until next time, 73 and so long.